Hi guys, it's me, Tiana Jones, also known as Kelly Fay, and I'm here today for the Global Peace Sustainable Development Goal Day One Summit. We have 17 days where we're bringing all nations together to find solutions for these goals. We have people here with prestigious backgrounds and experts giving you the information. And the first person I want to call upon is our amazing Professor Nada Rakovic from Croatia. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, greetings from Croatia. Uh, really honored to be here on the second year of this big Professor, we cannot hear you. Uh, My mic is open. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you now. Uh -huh. Okay. So once again, uh, greetings from Croatia. Uh, I want to celebrate uh, great uh, Dr. Tiana Jones for the second year, for the second Global Summit 2023. Uh, first day of this uh, 17 days, uh, 17 SDG today. Uh, we are starting with SDG 1, a uh, very important topic, no poverty. So uh, I'm really honored to start this uh, big summit today. Uh, Dr. Tiana, can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am. I will make you a co-host. Thank you. So let's start with this uh, uh, with this very important topic, no poverty, uh, coming from Croatia. Uh, I will present a case study in Croatia, uh, working on the Faculty of Economic Business Tourism Split, a professor in a high school, uh, very active on the global level uh, at IIU, co-founder of Europe. So for education, uh, I'm doing really a lot. Uh, first, SDG, no poverty. Let us all together make a better world. As our great uh, Tiana said, better the world, we all share one home. So it is our home, not only today, uh, it is forever. So end poverty in all its forms. We know that, that the first SDG have seven targets, seven targets, and each one is very important. Even we are talking about the economic, social growth. So we cannot talk about today only uh, SDG one. Each one SDG is correlated with other. So that is the reason why we have 17 SDGs, uh, food security, income inequality, uh, energy poverty, economic growth, economic growth, what it means economic growth. If we have still so many, so many poor people around the world. So 2022 was a terrible year for poverty. Will this year be better? Well, almost today at the, at the month May. Uh, do we see changes? Do we see changes? The war is still in Ukraine. And we, we see so many, uh, so many disasters around the globe. So I, I'm, I'm not so realistic, but we are here all together working, acting, and doing what we can. Also, the COVID has a big impact on the poverty in the world. Statistics are not are not good. We see here uh, around this, uh, what is happening, how many poor people we have in all, on all the continents. Each one continent has a big number of poor people in the millions. We are talking about the millions. In 2030, 2030, we have seven years to 2030. So will we have changes in this poverty? Uh, in my country, many people live on also uh, very poor. We have so many people who, who are poor. Uh, you see here the number more than 18% uh, 
uh, people, even we are doing all actions, we are doing all actions helping not only the people in Croatia, we are helping people all around the globe. Now, the air takes in Turkey, we make so many actions for this, for the people, for the children. We are educators, we are humanitarian and social workers. That is our mission. That is our mission. We are starting first from our country, from our neighbors, and we are doing on the global level. So let us see here in my country, uh, uh, we have uh, we have a value uh, called Kuna now uh, Euro and we have so many retired people, old people who need help. They cannot live from their from their pension that they are getting today after thirty five years of the work. Uh, statistics about income and living conditions here in Croatia. You see the poverty map here. This is from 2021. Now still uh, making for the 2022, but the situation is not more better. See, Croatia has 20, 21 county, beautiful counties. Uh, I'm living here uh, nearby the Adriatic Sea. We are a rich country. We are a rich country. We can live better than any country on the world. But still, we have so much poverty. We still have people who cannot move, uh, who cannot do nothing. So we are trying and we need to help all of them. Uh, I'm living uh, uh, in a town, the uh, smallest town. Uh, and in my part also, I have a big rural part uh, uh, surrounding around me. Uh, and I know, especially working like an educator and in a school and the university, how many uh, poor poor students are coming. They don't have they don't have money for a school meal. So first action is make give e each one uh, student each one child a school meal. That is first important. Uh, giving the clothes money is not. I can say we we can give them in the clothes, in the main things that they need to have for their life. So I will not talk about this uh, years. We know that we have a big risk of child poverty, not only in my country. In my country, we have 120,000 children living at the risk of poverty. Isn't that very sad? Yes, it is. Yes, it is when we see the children around us and all other countries in Europe. Uh, we can say that we need to that we have so much vulnerable children, children with disabilities, children who are living in hard family situations. So many divorces today. So many, so many uh, students uh, don't have, don't live uh, with the family. They live uh, with their parents. They live with other families. So. So what is the situation for us? And so many initiatives, Croatia is a country of European Union, so many initiatives, so many projects. So we need still people who will help giving uh, more projects, more projects for this. Projects uh, are not only projects if we talk about the tourism. Yes, we need today so much inventions, innovations, but this is the first thing what our politics needs to took around and take awareness of this poverty. Uh, children living in poverty. Uh, so many students cannot go on a school trip, I say, cannot organize a birthday party, don't have for a ice cream or something. So, so what, where we are living, what we are doing today. So let's try to do the best from us. Let's try to do this because uh, that is our mission. That is our mission. I can say uh, so many people are rich today. We see the we see uh, always uh, on the television, listening on the radio, uh, watching on the media. So, what is the feeling of the poor poor people? How people who don't have that feel? So, let us try. Let do this. Let make the policies. Let make the SWOT analysis and com make a combination of the poverty and social exclusion. We want no. Poverty. We want no poverty, and we every each one country needs to have a social plan. Education, yes, is transforming the lives of people. 
Cal helping doing this and always in the house. But let us see what we are doing. Like example, what I'm doing with my student. This is one priest who is living in Africa. Uh, we are in the contact with him. Uh, we are doing so many volunteer missions. We are sending for the poor children in Africa for their education. Every year at the beginning, we are sending uh, we are sending the money, we are sending the clothes, we are sending the books, we are sending so much things. And we are happy that we have the priests in Africa who is helping us, who is giving, who is giving that what we are doing that from our students. You see this, this on Croatia writes Hvala. It means thank you. So how, how do you feel when you see this? This um, this lady, this lady with a golden crown, she's the king. She's our miracle lady. She's a miracle lady of my town called Velika Gospa. You see the child are praying for her. She's praying for them. So that we need to do. Thank you for the sweeties. They don't have sweeties. They are thanking us for the sweeties. So that, that we need to do. So these are my students. You see here we have cookers. We are cooking for the poor in my country. Not only for the not only for Christmas, for Easter. We are doing that one month. We have that, we need to do that, and we are learning. So here is 2021. I didn't put, put the 2022, but we always giving them the lunch. They need to have the main meal. Helping old people, helping old people, giving them the services of beauticians, making them happy. They are old, but they need also to be beautiful. So this these students are helping them helping the students with disability. We are helping them. We are doing so many workshops with them. Uh, we are giving them also the things that they don't need. And you know, we are giving them the happiness. We are giving them the smile. That is something what we all need to do today, have a big smile. Students are helping, working, doing, and I am very happy. I, my heart is full of uh, full of uh, happiness when I'm doing this with my students, and I'm sure that this uh, this youth has a big bright future. So helping them, giving them the things that we can do. Also, you see, we are doing things from the, our society, from our town. We are helping this. But these benches, these benches lost the color, but we want to, that our old people, that our mothers with little children, that all have a place for sitting, a beautiful place. So this is our the mission. These are the missions. These are our actions. This was before one month. And so we are doing this always. We will continue doing that. And if we are talking like educators about the outcomes, we are define, defining that outcome for every our subject, for every our lecture. So let us recognize the importance of educational process in volunteering. Explain the role of motivation. Our students are very motivated. We have short-term actions and we have long-term actions. We are defining that. We are helping that. We are not, I can say that we uh, we uh, have so many ideas. Uh, yes, you see, uh, everything today is expensive. But if you want to give somebody something, you will find a way. Like example, we also work for a salary, but if we want to help somebody, we, we find a way how to get more money and to give the money to the people who need that money. So on ourselves, we can do a little, but together we can achieve everything. So this is our great Tiana, Dr. Tiana doing this old people here today on the platform. We all here in this 17 days, I'm sure will be amazing 17 days because last year we have a great summit. We have a grand success of the summit. So thank you. Thank you for the attention.
Thank you so much. That was so inspiring. And I cannot believe you do so much in this world. You are a highlight and an inspiration to all of us, Professor Nada Rakovich. Thank you again. Yo. So now I'm going to call upon Anne Bost from France. Welcome. Anne, can you hear us? So we will go to our next speaker, Caleb Tamilin Samuel. Yes, uh, hello, can you hear me? All? Yes, we can. Oh. Thank you very, very much for having me here at this time. Uh, um, it's such a wonderful presentation from Professor. I must say that uh, the world is lucky to have um, such a great person like um, like Professor. She has done so much for humanity and she has done greatly. So um, I would like to just make some little contributions, particularly to what she has said. Um, poverty is, 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 a, is one of the most difficult things to fight, is one of the most difficult things to address, particularly here in Africa. Millions of people are actually suffering from poverty, and um, we are also trying as much as we could, as 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 young leaders, particularly and humanitarians, to make sure that um, we eradicate poverty, poverty of all forms. There are different forms of poverty. Yes, but poverty of all forms. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, Are you there? We're losing connection with you. And Caleb is from Nigeria, guys. I think we lost him. We'll wait a couple more seconds. Sometimes they come back in and tune in and they'll still be talking about the same topic. We'll wait a couple more seconds and then we will go to the next speaker and circle back with him. Okay, so we're going to go to our speaker, Raymond Benzula. Can you hear us? So today has been very challenging. We haven't had very great connection with Zoom today, which could be a technical issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and speak a little bit about this topic. So the goal here is to be unique and find solutions on poverty issues. I'm in the United States of America and there is still poverty going on here. Here, People are finding new innovative ways to find a way to give out food at churches, food pantries, even on the side of the road. They have little um, homemade areas where you can go and stop and get food. They even have a refrigerator somehow running and generating energy in that a little mini free refrigerator on the side of the road. That is amazing. And they are running a cord from their house and their private property all the way to the road. And they're giving people cheese, 
They're giving people different yogurts. They're giving people different patties of meat. And I've actually stopped at this um, location to get food. And I thought about it. The United States is still going through poverty. Usually this is the cause of layoffs when people are working and they're actually losing their jobs, employment issues, and people that are disabled that cannot work. They are having the most issues in the United States with poverty. We do have some homeless that went from having a major great career to being injured or laid off, which means they've been let go at their job site, but we do have laws to protect those people. And again, they are able to collect some financial help monthly to get them food. Another thing in our country we have where we really want to focus on people not going hungry is something called a bridge card. A bridge card is a card where our government loads for each person 200 USD dollars onto the card. It doesn't matter if you are any ethnicity or any age, as long as you are eligible to sign up and make an appointment, even on a visa, and even if you're not a United States citizen, you can be eligible for getting assistance in food. So we do have a lot of people that are visiting from other countries that have visas. Um, they are on a card that can visit here for a certain amount of time. Maybe they're even going to school or working here. And during those programs that they come here to be assisted with, they are eligible for food from churches, organizations, and even distribution centers. We have distribution centers where they package older food or food that may be going bad, but not, not bad. And they go around to grocery stores and collect that food and then redistribute that food to the people of the communities. Also, there are farmers and there are different agricultural um companies and organizations that are growing their own food. I saw this one lady and she has over 500 pigs, 500 chickens, over 500 goats, 500, over 500, almost every single thing. She took a land that seemed like it couldn't be treated. It had sticks and lots of um, overgrown green on the land and what she did was she put all of her animals on that land and they started eating up all of the the land's green grass and different parts that people kept telling her that she wouldn't be able to clean up on her own and they also told her that she wouldn't be able to transform this land into this farm that her and her husband were building and all by herself this woman and her older husband and her kids took the land and they reinvented the land so that people could come there at a farmer's market every Sunday and get crops. So they took this land that didn't look like it could be reinvented, re-innovated, and they let these animals, they went in and bought animals from different farmers in different parts of the United States the animals got shipped to them. And then what they did was they continuously fed these animals with their scrap food. So the food that they didn't eat, the food that was to us, maybe some of us in the United States and other countries that may be our waste, what is called our waste, they recycled that waste for the animals on the farm every day. And they kept their waste. And they were able to use even fish that was no good anymore for the soil to make sure that this land that everyone told them that they couldn't do anything with 
was created to be fixed. And so many animals are on this land. I couldn't believe when I saw it, there was so many animals that were able to get food, but also they were able to set up their own agricultural distribution center for people in their city. So now people come to them to buy whole hens, whole chickens, and they clean them out. They pull the eggs out. And sometimes they have eggs that have two yolks in them. And they also have eggs inside of the hens they're cleaning. I've watched them do the actual work online. And I'm very fascinated with this because someone that had nothing, these people didn't have anything. They started from having nothing and building something and working very, very hard with not that much financial stability for getting started. And all they did was put in the efforts of making a chicken coop, um, financing the little money they had for their home and also the food startup and seed startup and soil turning startup for this land. And once they were able to really get going, they set up something that is in the trees that is a barrier for protecting the chickens from the owls and also from the birds that fly over. And this was a system that's like electricity, that it's like a light that basically goes off that scares the owls away because the lights go in and out, in and out. And I thought that that was a great system because the old school way is to put a crow or to put some sort of statue to make the um, to make the birds go away to scare them. But no, she was able with her husband to create some sort of um, energy of light that is zapping and scaring off the animals at night so that they are not attacking the chickens and hens. I thought that was amazing as well. So watching someone in my country that had nothing that was starting out build this land and build this, um, you know, agricultural distribution center was amazing to me. There's been also a way that she's been able to bring the soil back to life because certain spots of her land were dry and the soil needed to be turned. And so what they would do is they would take fish that was their scrapped waste and put it in buckets and they would dig holes in the ground and put this fish fish bones, um, just smelling buckets of this fish waste into the soil, into the ground. So you hear a lot where people use manure, which is cow waste to hydrate their soil. Well, no, this woman is using fish products, fish um, waste, and I cannot believe how green her soil is. I mean, how her crops are becoming so green, the roots are growing so fast, and they literally have a system that they have been able to follow through with that has produced very plumptuous chicken and hens, very great, great and greenly vegetables and fruits, and I'm very impressed because that enhanced my mobility thinking, okay, if somebody can go and take literally a piece of land that has needing to have work on so much innovation needs to happen here and they can start from scratch using waste finding and buying the correct animals that can bring this land to um, fruitation and another thing that she used was wild boars wild wild pigs and i was wondering why she had so many of them well, what they do is they eat part of that land, not just the green grass, some of the sticks, some of the twigs, some of the carrots that they throw into there. They drive around in a tractor and they throw buckets and buckets and buckets of waste or carrots 
in and even seeds into different parts of their land where they have the animals segregated. They're not all together. The chickens are in one area. The boars and the pigs are in one area. Um, I don't know if they have, I think they have one cow, maybe two. There's just, they have it segregated and they have a systematic way of a daily routine. Mm -hmm. I watch them get up at 2 a.m. And they continuously work until 8 p.m. at night, making sure that they're collecting the eggs, making sure that they're feeding all of the animals, making sure that they're turning any loose soil where I've seen this woman take her bare hands and scoop up the soil and put it into different sections of columns um, of a foundation. She's put seeds in there. And then what she does is she lets it dry a little bit and then she turns it around and puts it on the ground and pulls it up the, the funnel. She pulls it up and then she's basically building her own layout of how she wants her plants to be grown. So she has a specific system about this. And I believe that she's doing some major work in her community and so is the land owners around there because in the United States we do have a lot of different people now more than ever wanting to branch away from pesticides wanting to branch away from the food that could be sprayed with chemicals certain factories and certain places are now creating issues with the food and the hormones of the people because some people are not um, they're not adjusting to those hormones and they're getting either overweight, obesity, and obesity is one of the major issues in the United States. It's one of the major health death losses in the United States. And that is because of the fact that we are not getting the equality that Europe is getting. Europe is getting fruitaceous fruit, fruitaceous um, vegetables that are not sprayed with chemicals and pesticides. It's actually illegal in Europe to maintain their food in that way and grow their food that way and distribute their food that way. And I believe that the United States needs to work on this because if they want to build a better world, a better economics here, why are we not aware that we need the same equality and agriculture for poverty for food because poverty is happening due to so many issues but why are we not equal enough to get the respect level of european people and other countries there are countries all over the world growing their own food and surviving as is why can't the United States also give that respect and put some more laws behind growers and agricultural, um, you know, societies? There's so many people correcting this in the United States as they are aware that this is an issue. Obesity is huge where people are overweight because they're eating these factory manufactured foods that have all of this bad chemicals and different things inside of their food, bags of chips, um, candy, um, cookies, cakes, not even just that. Some of the vegetables have been learned to be sprayed with certain things. Some of the chickens have been shot up with different chemicals and different um, different stuff to make it grow bigger because they're greedy and they're trying to make more profit off of the food rather than giving this food away in certain areas. Now that's just the bad side of it. The good side of it is now the United States citizens are sticking up for themselves. They're getting to know the system. They're buying more land. They're buying more animals. They're saying enough is enough. I believe that this is one of the main causes of poverty in the United States because people are getting lazy here in the United States, not the people growing the food, not the people who are standing up for the right reasons. There are people here that are used to getting all of these um, 
rights to having the lifestyle that they think they need, not realizing that a little goes a long way if you know what to do with it. And I believe that they need to get a handle on reality. And reality is you have to work very hard for your things. You have to work very hard for the things you want in life. You have to find a way to survive, but live your life at the same time. How can we make this world a better place? Yes, there's children still hungry in the United States. There are children that are running away from their homes or even their parents are deserting them and abandoning them. There's foster care. There's adoption agencies. There's so much crime. There's women trafficking in the United States too. There's so many things happening and everyone thinks the United States is a freedom of land. Yes, we have constitutional rights. We are equal to each other and allowed to speak our minds with freedom of speech. But again, we have to have morality and values and integrity to change the dynamic of our lives, of our courses. How do we do that if we're unaware of what's going on? I am part of the youth and it take it took me a long time to realize that there are many SDG issues in my country now in the United States and also in the world. Yes, the United States gives health care. Yes, the United States has more opportunities for jobs and employment. Yes, we have equal education, but we also have issues that we need to work on together. And I believe that giving this analysts and data to more organizations and more grant funding um, organizations and companies and governments, I believe that this can be changed one by one and spread because there is a way in the United States to get government funding and private sector funding. I'm working on this now to figure out how can this change our economics? Well, the one thing I want to work on is no child should be hungry. No human being should be hungry. We have a we have a state that everybody wants to go to called Hawaii. It's beautiful beaches and beautiful islands. And you know what? It has been overpopulated with homelessness because the people think in the United States, they're so closed-minded. They think, oh, we can go live on these islands for free. We can go beg people for food, beg people for money, and they'll give us the money for free. I will tell you this, that is not the case. More people are dying on the streets and because of no hunger, um, because of hunger and not having food, we want to show that no hunger is a very serious thing that we have to work on. There are people that are living comfortably on the streets, having no hunger because they're living off of the island, they're fishing, they're having the natural resources for what they need to survive. But again, this is because this is an issue where people are getting too comfortable or also not using their resources in the correct way. But what about the children? What about the people that are abusing their children and they're neglecting them, not feeding them? What about the children that cannot fend for themselves or get the food for themselves. This is so serious that I want to focus on how we can spread the energy in a positive way, giving people a chance to know what exists, that all lives do exist, and there is people out there struggling in different ways. There are people out of the country struggling, yes, but there are people in my country in the United States struggling as well. We have to take a stand. And I believe that farming is the first step, growing the food, distributing the food, and giving this data to other farmers, showing other people how to grow their food. The, the poverty level has grown over the last 20 years. And that's because so many people are looking for an easy way out and an avenue that just needs to be adjusted. A system that we have to offer has been taken advantage of. The United States 
has people taking advantage of our government funding and all of our grants for so long and enough is enough. We need to find a way to circulate this to the people that are in need and adjust this so people will not be hungry. People will not be in poverty. There's no excuse in my country and other countries why we cannot share this data and analysis from virtual summits like this to give people encouragement. Technology is a very huge way that we can spread that energy quickly by giving the knowledge on how to grow. If you go to YouTube, YouTube has everything. They've became a major million to billion dollar platform. You know why? They're giving information, how to grow, how to read, how to write, how to format. They're teaching education on YouTube. And all you have to do is put in what you want to learn in the YouTube search bar. If life is this easy because we have a way of learning as an equality education, you have a way to put in what you're searching for in YouTube, even Google, to get the ways to start changing the world and growing everything. So this is all I want to wrap it up. And then I want to call the next speaker. Pay attention to your world around you. Pay attention to how you can create a better environment for everyone that is around you. And if you see children hungry or you are going to waste part of your food, Give your food away that you are going to waste because your neighbor or somebody in your community has children, has family members that are not doing well, that may be disabled and they cannot work. They may have gotten laid off from their jobs and they are not working. Someone will eat that food or someone will appreciate what you're giving them in information. So remember, we can make this world a better place and end poverty now. Thank you guys. And I want to call on my next speaker, Professor Saraya Bano from India. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sorry for delay. I was out of home. This is Professor Dr. Sureya Manu from Milayanaga, Chhattisgarh, India. I am assistant professor in computer science since 31 years and also as a global peace brand ambassador at Global Goodwill Ambassador. Today the topic is SDGs 1, No Poverty. As Mahatma Gandhi just said, poverty is not God-given. It is most definitely man-made. No one is born poor. Society makes one poor. There are people in the world so hungry that God cannot appear to them except in the form of bread. And he also said, poverty is the worst form of violence. Poverty is the situation in which people are unable to fulfill their basic needs. Poverty is the lack of food, shelter, medicine, and the treatment. It is very difficult for people, poor people to arrange their everyday meal. Poverty is measured by the income of a person. It envisions shared prosperity, a basic standard of living, and social protection benefits for people everywhere, including the poorest and the most vulnerable. The goal seeks to ensure equal right and access to economic and natural resources. Poverty affects the life of a poor family. A poor person is not able to take proper food and nutrition and his capacity to work reduces. Reduced capacity to work further reduce his income, making him poorer. Children from poor family never get proper schooling and proper nutrition. In the words of Aristotle, poverty is the parent of revolution and crime. The Iceland stands at the top of the countries with the lowest poverty rates with a poverty rate of 4.9% in 2021. 
and how can we solve no poverty? Eliminating poverty through equity, one of the main causes of poverty is inequality. Reducing poverty with resilience, commit, commit to climate change solution and climate justice. Eradicating poverty through education, halting poverty by ending hunger, poverty elevation through peace, care solves poverty, create jobs, raise the minimum wage, increase the earned income tax credit for childless workers, support pay equity, provide paid leave and paid six days, Stabilize work schedules that work, invest in affordable, high quality child care and early education, expand Mediclaim. And how to solve unemployment solution? Integrated Rural Development Program, Jawahar Rozgar Yojana, Jawahar Gram Samriddhi Yojana, Rural Housing Indira Awas Yojana. Food for Work Program, National Old Age Pension Scheme, Annapurna Scheme, Sampurna Gramin Rojkar Yojana. These are some few governments Yojana to eliminate unemployment. In the words of Albert Einstein, an empty stomach is not a good political advice. Now I conclude. Poverty is not the problem of a person, but of the whole nation. Also, it should be dealt with on an urgent basis by the implementation of effective measures. In addition, eradication of poverty has become necessary for the sustainable and inclusive growth of people, society, country, and economy. Poverty is the lack of resources leading to physical Deprivation, poor people are unable to fulfill basic survival needs such as food, clothing, shelter. These are the needs of lowest order and assume top priority. Poor people are unknown of their lack of voice, power and rights, which leads them to exploitation. Poverty alleviation is accompanied by a number of positive social impacts. These include improved access to food, improved access to education, and improved employment opportunities. At last, I want to share nice words said by Mother Teresa. Being unwanted, unloved, uncared for, forgotten by everybody, I think that is a much greater hunger, a much greater poverty, than the person who has nothing to eat. And he, she also said, loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible poverty. Thank you, Diana, ma'am, and thank you all of you for giving me such a beautiful opportunity. Thanks a lot. That was very beautiful. And those quotes mean something because we should not be in poverty. We should be finding a way to help everyone get enough financial stability. And I agree with you. We have to find a way to better our lives because we have to do that. And that is true. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next special guest is Dr. Daya Chudore. Dr. Daya? We're gonna go to our next speaker, Dr. Varghese, KJ, KJ. Uh, good evening, ma'am. See, I'm here as a participant and not as a speaker. My turn comes on uh, fourth, in fact. Okay. Okay. okay thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you for supporting. So we do thank have you. a. Thank you so much. 
So we do have a lot of people just tuning in to learn the knowledge. And I really appreciate that because you have to become a good listener to be a good speaker. And right now, poverty is a major worldwide crisis. And the reason is because we need more financial stability. They have a lot of talk about different banks in the United States that are basically freezing up and not giving the money to the people. And so now they're putting in place a way to protect the people's money that are in those banks. And this is something that we need to focus on because Yes, there are people that are already struggling in the world, but what about the people who are stable that may be holding integrity to pay for the value of everything that they're working hard for? And what about them? What about them keeping stability for their finances, keeping their education going? Because some people are even running out of their financial aid. Some people are using every systematic way of service, but then it's running out. What about those people? What about their help? What are we going to do to help those people continue to go to college or the universities here in the United States or even other colleges worldwide? This is a global issue, but what I can talk about is the things happening in the United States because I'm a United States citizen. That's where I live. So the best thing that I can describe to you guys is that we are also going through things as well, where our country is in certain debts, where we are trying to get out of this issue. And it's hard to explain because you would think that the United States wouldn't keep borrowing more money, borrowing more money, borrowing more money from other countries and alliances. You would think that we would find a way because we have so much economical growth here and innovations here to just figure out how to make the profits and contribute the profits to the debts and then also circulate that energy for new innovations. And I believe that another reason we have poverty is because of the suppression, the suppression of the knowledge. There's so much knowledge out there for services in the United States, but nobody even knows where to get those services because of the lack of education, the lack of knowledge. If you would have known that, and I would have known that, where we could have gotten our financial help, then we wouldn't be in that situation. I can't believe that I did not know how many services were in my community up until a little under two years ago. I had no idea that they had places to go and pick up food. Another thing that I want to explain to you Mental health is a major crisis and issue worldwide. Why some people are in poverty is because they refuse to educate themselves. They refuse to give the knowledge to others. They refuse to use their emotions and lack of ability to reinvent their lives, to be the best version of themselves. So mental health is such a major issue as it's an element of all SDGs, where the mind stays positive, where the mind stays motivated, where people are trying to get better instead of worse, having willpower of not giving up, keeping that light mass of energy inside of them, the positive faith base, um, you know, respect and obedience for a higher creator. And I believe that this is all something that has to be brought up when you're talking about poverty. Why are people in poverty when we have all the solutions of every SDG right now? Even in Global Peace SDG book that I just put out with all of those nations and some of the speakers here today worldwide on Amazon, those are all of the issues and some of the issues with solutions. Why are we not able to get this funding and push toward these issues if people are already admitting on virtual summits and calls and United Nations Sustainable Development Goal um, summits and conferences? Why have we not gotten this issue established to be defined within the last two years? 
Yes, they keep saying the year 2030, we're supposed to be coming together and finding every solution. Well, the solutions are already here with the people that are mentally able to control their thoughts and emotions. So if people are already able to give that information and innovation, what is the issue? What is the problem? Why haven't the United Nations taken all of these videos and summits and broken them down and put them into analysis and data for researchers, for scientists, for economic developers. Why have we not seen anything coming out of this beside award ceremonies and contributions? What contribution can they make to us now, the world, the entire world as a whole, the United States, India, Europe, other countries, even parts of Asia? Why is there still suppression? Why is there suppression of knowledge? I don't understand because of the fallacy or the agendas of maybe elite masses that exist to control the media. Maybe they're always going to be a bad apple in a bag of good apples. Maybe there's going to be people that are just not caring too much about others, but we are the people and we have the right to make our lives better. And we have the right to be equal and get equal pay, equal jobs, equal education. All of those are issues bringing back to the elements of poverty. All of these are issues to how our mental health is and how people are committing crimes in each nation because they're not standing up and they're not speaking about these things more. They're suppressing people that have the knowledge so that they can pollute the world with the knowledge of diverse negative matter, dark matter, negative energy. Who wants to hear about negative energy? Find a solution on TikTok. Find a solution on Instagram. Show more agriculture growing. Show more job opportunities. Post more job opportunities. You want to help your communities you want to help services when you find out someone is hiring at their employment location you should be able to post that somewhere and say if you're looking for a job this is where the job is located if you're looking for education these are the grants and scholarships available there are people doing this now but why are we the people are looking at this and saying oh that's a job for me that's a job for everybody. Think about it. If you're not going to get hired, someone else is. And it, there's no competitiveness when there's so many different opportunities out there. Greed is keeping us back from changing poverty. Aggression is holding us back from innovations. And these things are really suppressing us. This is what's suppressing us worldwide, not just in the United States. We can go on every Zoom call this week, every day, the, every SDG, 17 goals. But what change is it going to make if when we get off this call, call, we're just doing the same thing repetitive of following a fallacy, following other people that are making your minds think that this is okay to have greed. It's okay to be a celebrity. None of that matters. You know what matters? Standing up for yourself having morals and choosing the right thoughts and emotions inside of you, controlling your thoughts and emotions so that your actions and decisions can benefit your life. And this will include you to get a finer education. You can go online now and get an education. I'm at the I'm at the University of Phoenix online in the United States. And I know in London and Europe and other areas, they also too offer online schools and online classes. So even IIU, they have certain classes that you can still learn research and knowledge. When you join those summits, there's gonna be someone like myself, or Professor Nada Rakovich, somebody's gonna be on there and they are going to have something that can educate you. Education can be in forms of books and also technology, but it's the knowledge from the experience or the facts that are being circulated in the world. Again, why are we here today? We're here not just to speak, but to learn what everyone 
thinks or feels about these issues. So these issues can become a solution quicker than 20, the year 2030. Who wants to wait for that? How do you know our world isn't going to be getting worse because we're not moving fast enough or we're not posting the correct energy? We're only looking at what's benefiting us. Who cares what's benefiting us? Because in the longevity, the long run, what's going to benefit you is the knowledge, the education, and even the opportunities that you open up for others because you can rely on each other. As people say, you cannot rely on everyone. You have to do things for yourself. That's the fourth effort that you put into it. But what about the reciprocated actual energy that comes back onto you for how you treat another person, another human being? That's what you have to be aware of. And this is why we have these issues today, because there is not too many leaders, but there's more followers than leaders. And they choose to follow greed, aggression, and the wrong way of thinking. So this is something that has to be worked on. When we have these summits, we have these conferences, and we have these calls. Remember, when you hang up, this is the rest of your life on the line. This is the rest of your days. And you want to put in the most value for humanity. You want to give that information. Why are you holding that information? To get an award? What's that award going to do for you? Is it going to feed you? Maybe give you more job opportunities, maybe even get you into a better school. But there's a limitation here. You have to be kind to others. You have to be positive in your mindset. You have to control your emotions and thoughts with mental health because that is why we are in these SDG issues worldwide because people are not standing up for their values or they were never taught it. And if they were taught it, they're being greedy, thinking that they're above others because they have the knowledge and information. Spread that information. Not everyone had a happy home. Not everyone had great parents. Not everybody had somebody to love them and care about them or give them any type of positive information. I know. I know. I'm firsthand. You look at me and you think, oh, she has such a great life. But I work very hard to have a great life and to stay out of poverty. I work very hard to make sure that I'm getting an education, even at this older age of 32 years old, where some people would have given in and given up a long time ago, especially in the United States, because there's so many lazy people here. But I will tell you, there's also a reverse, and there are some hard workers here as well. So be the change that you want to be. Remember to follow your heart and intuition and your giftings and grow to develop to control your thoughts and your emotions because that comes first. Okay, we're going to go to the next speaker now. Dr. Daya Tudore, are you ready now? Yes. Good morning, good evening to everyone. Thank you for having respected Caliphate, <clears throat> Piana Jones. This is Dr. Dia Chaudhary, a business lady, chairperson of Team Dia Global Private Limited, and also president of Global Peace Protection Campaign. Sustainable Development Goal 1 is about reducing poverty for all people everywhere. Between 2015 and 2018, global poverty continued its historical decline. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic reversed the steady progress of poverty, introducing and reducing over the past 25 years. For the first time, into, uh, uh, into uh, the world's Share of works, workers living with their families below the international poverty line increased from 6.7% uh, and 7.2%. Uh, Basic targets of Sustainable Development Goal 1 are the 
uh, extreme poverty by 2030 for all people by implementing social protection systems by ensuring equal rights to economic resources and uh, as well as basic services for everyone by ensuring significant mobilization of resources and also by creating sound policy uh, frameworks at the national and international levels. Being founder of Kimdia Global Welfare Society, I always work to feed hungry and poor people by launching national and uh, international welfare projects. Nowadays, I am working on peace protection campaign to build international peace and also serve to save humanity for peace uh, is campaign. Let's take care of our planet together. Our planet Earth needs attention for being sustainable. Save Earth, save humanity, save world, save water, forest, and save natural resources to support happiness and peaceful life on Earth. Thank you for your attention. Together we can achieve more. Congratulations, dear Tiana and all. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. And you're doing great work. And we are happy to be a part of all of your conferences and what you continue to spread is positivity. And as long as you continue that, you will succeed in life. Thank you so much. So we are going to go circle back to Caleb, Samuel. Because we wanna make sure you can hear us now. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm so sorry for the break in transmission the other time. Uh, it was a bit technical, just a technical issue around. Uh, so like I was saying, um, we have various, various forms of poverty. Although my speech was supposed to take place um, on the thing to talk about reduced um, inequality which is the goal then, but at least I want to make some little contribution to, to today when now that we are talking about no poverty. So definitely you know that um, all these goals are interconnected, they are interrelated. When you talk about poverty, definitely you talk about inequalities. One of the major things we, we can use to show that a society is under inequal state is particularly poverty. And we all know, particularly in Africa, about 400, 406 million people are living in abject poverty, which is not a good result at all. Particularly in my country here in Nigeria, about 12 million persons are living in poverty. So which means there are still a lot of work to be done. There are still a lot of, a lot of interventions, a lot of empowerment that is needed to be rolled out to people living in abject poverty. Now, particularly for my organization, though we are, we are getting set for major projects that has to do with um, empowerment, particularly people living in underserved communities, people living in um, rural communities and environmentally degraded areas. So going down to my field of study also, we can all talk about various issues that causes poverty. Now, let me take, for example, my field, which is climate change, addressing climate change. So we all know that climate change particularly is one of the major causes of social inequalities, particularly if you cannot afford food to eat, if you do not have access to food, which is the basic need of man, if you do not have access to it, definitely that is social injustice. So, and it is, of course, an injustice in a particular place is an injustice everywhere. So addressing poverty in a particular region or in a country is addressing poverty worldwide. So based on the operations of my organization too, uh, we are trying to make something good. We are trying to make something better by collaborating, by going in cooperation with um, other organizations here in Africa that has to do with reducing poverty. Of course, poverty can never and totally be er eradicated. That is the fact. But then it can be reduced to the barest minimum. But at the same time, we need to stay optimistic about ending poverty. 
Of course, we can end poverty. Yes, this this depends on the action we take. This depends on all and being on deck. So, of course, definitely, when we when we tailor our minds, when we work so hard for particularly people living in the on the south community and particularly for people that do not have food to eat, definitely we, we know that the world is going to be a better place that we work for. It is not only for ourselves now. Now we are also working for generations to come. Of course, our generation in in years to come, we also meet the good works that, that we have done. So um I will talk more about that on the day 10, where I will be giving my speech also. So thank you very much for giving me this time to share my quota to the contribution, particularly that in regards to um, no poverty. So thank you very much, young leaders. Thank you for the good words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing us exactly what's going on in your country. We need to know what's going on in everyone's country right now. So now I wanna focus on a couple more things and that is just giving back the value of why we are here today. We are all here to speak and give knowledge. We are all here to learn new information. And one thing that I will tell you that we focused on last year for sustainable development goals was the, was the farming side of everything. We were able to learn that you can go on the internet and order seeds, that you can have a couple plants in your home, outside your home, and you can grow basil, you can grow carrots, you can pretty much grow a little bit of everything. And I think that if you focus on growing your own food and a few different things, you can stay healthy and you can also give people new knowledge on how you grew those food foods because you did it yourself. And that way they can also do that as well. And if you grow a, enough food, you can turn that into a small business. You can actually go to a weekend farmer's market or your community, maybe even off the side of the road because people do that in Gilroy, California, United States. They will start selling their produce off the side of the road. Some areas you need a permit depending on where you're going. And of course you pay your taxes on how much food you sell for a small business. You can do this and this can help end poverty. Imagine if a lot of people did this and you can go to different parts of different blocks of different communities and see that there are some sort of food or shoes or school supplies or something for a less amount that we can distribute to our communities. An example is in Africa, they need shoes, they need school buses, they need school supplies, they need clothes. They are really, really focused on the school buses because their transportation is very low. I know that in the United States, I have some friends that have invested in Africa. They are building a school. They are buying buses and sending buses to Africa so that they can help people get from one destination to the next. I think that this is very important. Any service that you can do, if you invest in something like that, you can reinvent a school bus. If a bus has rust, you can weld it, you can sand it, you can bondo it, which means cover holes, you can paint it, and you can work on getting the the parts for the school bus online, getting them ordered off Google or Amazon, getting them shipped to your local post office, getting them shipped to schools and secure locations and not in the villages. I believe that if you work on getting the things that you need from the internet and having them shipped to these places that you can pay maybe a small distribution fee or a fee of a service, you can be safe with getting the products you need shipped to the countries that you're in. 
And I believe that we focused on that last year in our SDG conference because people are looking for more ways to make money. They're looking for more ways to get the merchandise products and to become a consumer. Now in this world, you have to have a merchant and you have to have a consumer. The consumer is us. We're buying certain things. The merchant is also us. We're selling certain things. You are both. You are not just the consumer, somebody who is buying things, but you can also be the merchant and also selling things. Whether you're knitting, crocheting, whether you're creating sewing, whether you are, you know, very independent and you know how to make homemade bricks out of mud. They have a certain recipe for places in Mexico where they take the adobe old recipe for bricks and they make it out of certain clay and mud. That is a way people are building stronger homes out of the country. You can Google that, how to make a brick and you become sufficient to make brick homes, brick schools that will last. That is something you can do in India. That is something you can do in all countries. I know because my father, when I was a child, did his own experiment and made a brick in front of me. And he got that information online. This is why we can do anything using technology now. We can innovate all ideas by researching how other people have done it. We don't have to be the one person that has created or you know invented something because nine times out of 10, someone has already invented something similar to what you may be inventing or thinking about, and it does exist in the world. If that is the case, use Google, use YouTube, and educate yourself in the best way possible. If you do not have equality education and you're not able to go to a school, teach yourself using the internet. I know that there's restrictions on certain countries with the internet, but there is somebody out there that knows that trade. You can give a helping hand and dedicate your time and learn these things as well. You can be the change. You can follow someone else's lead to learn something innovative. You can give your time. In this world, we can be anything we put our minds to. We can become a doctor, a lawyer. We can become a locksmith. We can become anything we put our minds to. So remember, it's up to you to give service in your own way. But learning that service can be your trade and you can benefit and that will end poverty. The reason I'm pausing is because I cannot control what's going on outside. So every time they're growing or they're cutting the grass and it is that type of summer, I am making sure I mute myself so it's not rude to you guys because you don't want any background noise when you're explaining something and you're very passionate about it. You want to try to be polite to everyone. And I want to know, is there anyone who else who would like to speak? Because I know mostly everyone here is here just to learn because they already have different SDG days set aside. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. And remember, we have SDG 2 tomorrow. 
all lives do exist. Global peace, sustainable. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. I will really speak. Oh, we have Poonam Gathi, and she's going to speak yeah. now. Good evening. The SDG goal one is poverty. Many issues cannot be responded to in a single line answer. The poverty across the global is one of those. World leaders are forced to find out some remedial action to solve it. Looking for joint efforts to be made from government, corporate, NGOs, national and international institutions, university educators, farmers, and the supportive machinery to play an important role. The world economics are facing very serious and complex social economic imbalance, which result in many other problems such as population growth, poverty, price hike, black money, unemployment, tourism, and extra. Poverty and unemployment are such problems that need address on an urgent basis to maintain peaceful living on the earth. The four kinds of poverty we find. Reason for poverty. Reduce income from agriculture due to incessant development continuing with the traditional method instead of using innovation tools and techniques for increased crop production with a better quality. Lack of education and employable skill in literacy, poor law and order, employment and rural area, casteism and other dog customs and writers. Most of the time, the economic reforms are targeting the urban regions. As a result, the rural economics get impacted negatively. Increased rate of population and decreased death rate. Victims of disease increased cost on health. Weaker government and political will be to take top decisions. Unemployment due to less demand of labor and danger for facing lifestyle is extra. Poverty straight line. Access to education, innovation, and technology, making war and conferences free world, economic growth, policies, and programs with the its security, empowered management of healthcare, water, sustainable development, and nature resources, empowerment of employment. Thank you so much, China, giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for giving us that information. And this is so serious. People need to actually pay attention to what's going on in different countries because this issue is happening all over our world right now. Thank you so much, everyone, and continue to stay blessed, and I will see you all tomorrow. I want to give you guys a heads up that I will be issuing your certificates today for Global Peace Sustainable Development Goal Day 1. And this is so important. Thank you all for giving us information. Hello, dear uh, Dr. Tiana. I am really sorry. It's too um, challenging for me to for this uh, no, uh, internet connection. 
but I, I can speak for in behalf of my country. Okay, thank you so much. We will be here to listen to you. Okay, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, so uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you, uh, my dear Dr. Tiana, for this uh, opportunity and to be one of your speaker today for this um, Sustainable Development Summit. So my name is Raymond Banzuela and one of the technical vocational educator, educator here in the Philippines. Um, and I'm, I'm also an education program consultant and primarily in the field of a technical and vocational education where I am in charge in uh, competency-based curriculum design learning materials and uh, the development of competency, competency standard. So um, when we speak of poverty, it is defined as a lack of money or material possession to live on. And it is um, defined as a people's inability to meet their basic needs. So uh, poverty has undoubtedly been a long-standing economic issue here in the Philippines. So the proportion of families living below uh, the official poverty line has gradually increased over the last four decades. And uh, furthermore, economic growth has uh, not resulted in poverty reduction in, in recent years. And uh, according to the latest official data from the Philippine Statistics Authority, uh, there are still more poor Filipino today compared to 2018. And 19.99 uh, million people in the country will be poor in the, at least 2021. And that is amounting to 18.1% of the total population. And uh, between 2018 and 2021, approximately 2.3 million Filipinos were pushed into poverty. And uh, primarily as a result of this pandemic economic impact. So uh, the Department of Social Welfare and Development is one of the government agencies that helps uh, to alleviate poverty here in the Philippines. And uh, each, uh, its program is um, the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino, at also known as the PORFIS, and the National Poverty Reduction Strategy and a Human Capital Investment Program that provides conditional cash transfer to four households for a maximum period of seven years. And of course, to improve the health, nutrition, and education aspect of their lives. Then the National Advisory Council uh, recommend a longer period under exceptional circumstances. And then the selection of um, qualified household beneficiaries on a, a nationwide basis. The Department of Social Welfare and Development shall uh, select qualified household beneficiaries of corpus using standardized targeting system. And um, according to World Bank in 2015, uh, these four piece beneficiaries had reduced their income gap to 7.4%, indicating that the program had helped reduce shorter poverty. So this is the situation of our country today. And uh, one of the uh, initiative here in our country is uh, through Icaritas Manila. It is a non a profit organization that serves as the lead social service and development ministry of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. Uh, the organization's mission is to promote total human development, alleviate poverty, and establish a Christian community with strong social conscience. One of their programs is the Youth Servant Leadership and Education Program, which aims to give low-income youth the opportunity to pursue a college or vocational degree. And as of now, they have uh, 4,639 scholars with uh, 667 of them graduating with honors and award. So um, this pandemic has had a great impact in Filipinos. Many have lost their jobs. And um, during this period, the country's economy collapsed and more people struggled to meet their daily expenses. Over 2.3 million Filipinos fell into poverty uh, between uh, the year 2018 and 2021. So uh, primarily as a result of this pandemic economic collapse, poverty increased to around 20 million or 18.1% of the population in 2021, up from 16.7% in 2018. 
Uh, so these figures exceed the government's target of 15.5% to 17.5%. However, aside from the pandemic situation, uh, what factors contribute to the poverty in the Philippines? And based on some research, uh, the main cause of poverty are uh, first, the corruption and poor governance. So poor governance in the economic growth has a negative impact on poverty reduction effort. And then corruption causes inefficient use of public funds and misappropriation of resources for private gain rather than public benefit. A more efficient allocation means fewer resources for poverty relief programs such as education and healthcare. And then uh, the misallocation of these resources means fewer uh, for essential service such as for the uh, infrastructure development, which would promote economic growth by creating jobs and improving productivity. But right now, our government in, uh, is making an effort to achieve what is expected to be a good solution for poverty. So through uh, various government branches initiative on poverty alleviation, one of them is uh, our uh, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, uh, which provide free and high quality technical vocational education services and uh, in fact, according to Publicus Asia Incorporated, the agency now leads the survey with high approval rating and a high trust rating for providing excellent programs and public services. Another um, main causes of poverty is unemployment. So another source of this poverty in the country is uh, unemployment. The unemployment rate has been steadily rising leaving millions of people without jobs or any source of income. People cannot earn money from working where there are no jobs available. So they will remain poor or uh, unless something is done soon. The unemployment rate or uh, wage inequality are all significant determinants of poverty. According to the research from the American nonprofit organization, the National Bureau of Economic Research, 1% increase in unemployment a result in 0.4 and 0.7 increase in poverty rates, while 10% increase in a minimum wage result in 2% decrease in a poverty rates. So um, another leading causes of poverty is limited access to healthcare services. So poverty increases the chances of poor health, which uh, traps people in poverty. Every year, infectious and ne uh, neglected tropical diseases kill the most vulnerable and well-publicized people. The expense of medical care in the in course of medication uh, can put a significant financial strain on the patient and their family members. In worst case scenario, the financial burden may force families to sell their belongings, pull their children out of school to work, or even resort to begging. <coughs> Sorry. And the last one is uh, the limited educational opportunities. Poverty and education are closely linked. A child is like, uh, less likely to uh, receive an education if his or her parents are unable to earn a living. Uh, and then as a result, a child who does not receive an education is uh, unlikely to be able to support himself or herself in the future perpetuating uh, this cycle of poverty. Although um, this is the case of the majority of our community. So free technical and vocational education program helps to meet the needs of the people by providing skills training that is relevant to their business, community, and industry. And uh, of course, uh, there are numerous technical education uh, scholarship program that meets uh, these needs, such as um, what is so-called a uh, special training for employment program for citizens who want to have skills that can be used in business or self-employment, which includes uh, free skills training and a competency assessment, free entrepreneur training, and free starter toolkits that include uh, learners' financial allowance. So, um. According to the Philippine Statistic Authority, the country has 19.99 million people living in poverty. And these are uh, the suggested actions to help resolve and address poverty in order to address these social issues. First, we have to create an awareness. 
social media, as we all know, has become an integral part of our daily lives, and it can be used to raise awareness for social causes. Posting links on Facebook, Twitter, and other platforms can help people learn more about poverty and raise awareness about the issues. The second one is donate. So donation can help in a variety of ways and do not always have to uh, uh, be a monetary. For example, uh, donating old books to poor children and purchasing groceries for poor families to combat hunger. Donating old uh, clothes, furniture, and other necessities can also help improve the well-being of the poor. And uh, of course, um, providing aid in the creation of jobs for the poor. And uh, uh, this is indeed one of the goals of the technical vocational education system here in the Philippines through a pre-program that will help every Filipino get a job. And then uh, according to the Philippine Statistic Authority, 2.93 million Filipinos are unemployed. So more employment opportunities means more chances to escape poverty. And uh, some method uh, for increasing employment among literally uh, literary people can be taught. And lastly, and uh, as a result, education ed or educate the poor or the underprivileged. Reading skills can lift millions of people out of extreme poverty. Educating children can be accomplished by developing programs that will aid their learning, such as teaching them how to read and write and reading them some stories. So um, as an educator, educator uh, we will never stop reaching out the help for our less fortunate countrymen by delivering fascinating and excellent services and quality education to meet poverty and all methods, even simple things that can be shared. So we will fulfill it for a better future and let us always consider the welfare of the majority. Let us always uh, leave the spirit of heroism. It's a great feeling to be able to help even if it is for something small. So once again, uh, thank you for having me here, uh, dear uh, Dr. Tiana Jones. Wow, thank you so much for the analytic and data. We need that. We need to know exactly the numbers and exact situations and research and facts. Thank you guys so much. And God bless thank you. you thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And please join again tomorrow for SDG2. And things will get better and grow because we will help the environment by helping the people and humanity. Thank you guys. And I am signing off for now. Take care.